Hey guys, it's Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is actually a very different video to what I intended to film. I was going to sit down and do like a normal makeup video. As I sat down before I filmed and just had to poke my face, pluck my eyebrows and whatnot, um, I decided that my face is probably ready for shaving or dermaplaning. Basically dermaplaning is like type of facial skincare thing which basically involves just shaving your face. It removes all like peach fuzz and the dead layer of skin on the surface of your face. So I've only been doing this the past couple of months but I thought it would be something that you guys might be interested in seeing. Um, I know a lot of like beauty salons and stuff do charge to have like dermaplaning facials and stuff all the ones near me it costs like 40 pound a time or something and i'd need that like once a month i can't really afford to go and get that done so i watched a couple of videos on youtube about it and i've done it myself a couple of times now um so i thought i kind of know enough about it and i've had enough experience with it to film my own little video so i always have had like quite a lot of peach fuzz around the edge of my face and i get like a hairy top lip it's not terrible but i see it and it bothers me it's always been something i've been quite insecure about like if i take flash photos you can always see like the fuzz around the edge of my face and sometimes across there like i said i was really insecure about it um but i was quite scared of starting to dermaplane or like shave my face myself because i thought like oh my god it's gonna come back really thick and i'm gonna have to start doing it like every other day i'm gonna get really thick dark hair on my face but after doing it a couple of times that is definitely not the case it grows back just like it looked before i know some people probably do it more regular but i only do it sort of as i need to which does probably work out about once a month or so just when i can start seeing it again on photos and it does start bothering me that's when i will tend to do it again so like I said, I was going to sit down and film a makeup video, but I thought, actually, I could probably need to like shave my face before I do this. So I thought, actually, I'm going to film this instead. Maybe film the makeup video after for a different week's upload. If I can be bothered if I've got time, I don't know. Because I do just normally like to let my skin like sit and settle after I have dermaplaned. Just put like some serums and stuff on just to make my skin feel really nice and smooth and lovely. So another reason that I did start dermaplaning is also I suffer with pretty dry skin. I do get quite dry, flaky skin, especially like around here and on my chin as well. I do get dry patches around here. Um, just in general, my skin is very dry. I have to use a lot of moisturizer and stuff to stop like my makeup flaking off. And so dermaplaning removes all the dead, dry skin. So it leaves my skin feeling really nice and soft and smooth and just not as awful and dry as it normally does. So by no means am I an expert on this. I am not saying that this is how you have to dermaplane your face if you want to do this at home. This is just what I do. And if I am, if anyone's got any tips or anything for me, then I am more than happy to read them. Um, just leave them in the comment section down below. But like I said, this is definitely not how you should do it. It's not necessarily the right way to do it. It's just how I have chose to do it. And I've not had any issues with it before. So that's just how I've continued to do it. I also just use really cheap stuff. I basically just use the cheapest stuff that I can find, not gonna lie. So I will try and insert sort of a before photo of what my face looked like before I even, before I tried dermaplaning for the first time, just because that's like what my natural face will look like. Obviously it's not grown back at the moment quite as bad as it was before I even first started doing it. So if I remember, I'll try and insert like a before and after photo. Uh, I did take photos the first time I did it, but I've just never uploaded them on my Instagram or anything. I just didn't think people would particularly find it that interesting. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just bob in my headband. I do apologise, it looks really gross. It needs a wash. So I'm just going to start off. Normally I would cleanse and tone my face, but my cleanser kind of looked like it had gone off, so I thought it would probably be best to throw it away. But I am just going to tone my face. I always use the Mario Badescu Glycolic Acid Toner. 
And I've got a tiny little bit left. I am going to do some more of this. But I'm just going to use this on my face just to make sure that there's no dirt or anything left on. I haven't worn makeup in the past few days, so there shouldn't really be any makeup residue on my face. Just to make sure it's nice and clean before I start. So. So yeah, still a little bit of dirt on my face, which is why I do that before I start. So the stuff that I use to dermaplane my face, like I say, it's nothing expensive or fancy. I literally bought the cheapest little face razor that I could find on eBay. So it's just a little plastic thing like this. It's got a plastic cap on it to take that off and it is just like a tiny, it's a tiny little razor. And then I'm literally just going to wipe that off on a cloth so I can show you guys what comes off my face at the end. Which is pretty gross but it's also really satisfying at the same time knowing that you've just got rid of all this off your face. So I'm just using my little body shop owl cloth that I got in my advent calendar. It was really cute. So I'm just going to wipe the razor off on that when I have done. So when I am dermaplaning my face, what I do is I work in the direction of the hair growth. So like here, I'll go down and follow the way that my hair grows. Some people like to do it against, but I don't. I just go down and I just use like quick little strokes. So I'll go like that rather than doing all the way down my face in one. I will do just fast little and I always pull my skin like taut just so I don't catch any bits of my skin while I'm doing it so I will just pull my face so you will see some pretty crazy looking faces while I'm doing this so I'm just going to try and show you a close up of what it looks like at the moment so as you can see I have quite a lot of like peach fuzz around the edge of my face all around there like across my cheeks and it's the same on the other side and then like across here as well I do it quite a lot of hair and around here on my forehead is fine but I still go over pretty much all of my face just to make sure it's all nice and smooth and I'm getting rid of any dead skin cells that I can't see anyway so I am going to start I'm just going to try and tuck this bit of hair behind my ear as best as I can. I'm just going to start the fuzziest bit of my face here. Like I say, just quick, short strokes. Pulling the skin as taut as you can. And just do little sections at a time. I mean, like, look how much has come off in just that one go. You just have to be careful like not to nick any bits of your face like I've got quite a raised mole there so I have to be careful going around that that I don't catch it or anything. I mean I don't put too much pressure on I'm not really digging it in I'm just going along the surface of the skin. But I will use more pressure like around the softer parts of my face. You can see how it's like the hair's building up there on the edge of my face. So yeah, like around my cheeks, I probably put more pressure on them what I would on my chin and my forehead. And my skin does go quite red when I do this. Your skin going red is pretty normal when you're doing this. Um, my skin just goes red really easy anyway, so it probably will look a lot worse on my skin than what it would on someone else's. And I try and hold the razor at kind of like a 45 degree angle to my face. I also have to try and go like kind of under my jawbone around here because I know we've got quite a lot of fuzz there so I just try and pull the skin up as much as I can. 
and avoid like your under eye areas they don't need because the skin's really delicate there so you don't need to do like these bits here and we'll just go around Also, go really careful around your eyebrows because you don't want to end up like taking your eyebrow off or anything. And it won't be too much of a disaster if I did because my eyebrows are tattooed on, but I still would rather keep the hair that I've actually got there. So you can kind of see that my skin is starting to go a little bit red compared to this side, but that is completely normal for me. So once I feel like I've gone over all my face, I do just switch my mirror around to like the zoomed in side and just check around like there, like around the worst places and just make sure I have got pretty much everything that I'm happy with what I've done. So I'm just going to give you another little close up of my face now that I have done. So you can see that like around this part of my face. Although it still looks a bit red at the moment, it is a lot smoother and less hairy than what it was before. Same like around my lips. Still a little bit of like really really tiny little hairs. Like I can never get absolutely everything. I think it's probably impossible to get absolutely every little hair off your face. But And then on this side as well. It just feels a lot smoother and nicer. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna try and show you the state of my cloth. So that is most of the stuff that has just come off my face. I did catch a couple of like longer hairs, but you can see there's quite a lot of peach fuzz, quite a lot of like dead skin, pretty grim. A lot of it does kind of fall onto me and my dressing table as well so that's not absolutely everything. So once I've finished and my skin is feeling lovely and smooth I just like to put some serums and moisturiser and stuff on it and um, just because it absorbs better once that you've kind of dermaplaned your face it opens up your pores and stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna like, put a face mask on in a bit but for now, I, I've got these little samples of the Body Shop's Drops of Youth Concentrate. I got these little samples yesterday. So I'm just going to try some of this on my face. Just kind of see how this feels. Ooh, it's quite thick. I'm just going to rub this in around my face just because it will absorb a lot better now. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to film a makeup video today as well. Just because I do want my skin to just kind of sit and just feel nice. So that drops the view serum. Just feel really nice. And I'm also going to go in with my Revolution 2% Hyaluronic Acid. I always use this on my face before makeup and moisturiser. But anyway, and I try and use it on the night as well. It's a plumping and hydrating solution. So really good for if you've got a dry skin. So I'm just going to bob drops a lot. I'm not really a huge skincare person to be honest. I don't particularly talk about skincare that much um, on this channel or in general really. I am quite lazy when it comes to skincare, I'm not gonna lie. Um, because I've got dry skin I hardly ever get spots or anything. So like spot treatment and stuff is not something I particularly use. I literally just 
moisturise and that's pretty much it and do like an exfoliating scrub a couple of times a week when I can be bothered but the this is like the main skincare thing that I use just to keep my skin hydrated I do moisturise before I put my makeup on um, and I try and moisturise on a night when I remember if I'm not super tired but yeah there's definitely more that I could do skincare wise but like I said I'm just quite lazy I've got naturally a pretty decent skin so I don't feel the need to do a lot with it but the dermal planing is something that I do really like to do just because like I said I was really insecure about the peach fuzz and it helps get rid of all the dead skin like I said, by no means am I a professional on this. This is just how I have chose to do it. I've not had any issues with it. The redness will go down eventually. It's not too bad. It's a bit red at that side. So I've done more recently, but that side started to calm down a bit. Like I said, I do have pretty red skin anyway. Um, and I mind get a couple of little ingrowing hairs, but I've never had any issues doing this. I just thought I'd do a video um, just to share with you guys and like I say if you do have any tips or anything then please feel free to leave them down below I'm gonna take my headband out so that is it for today if you did enjoy this video then please give me a big thumbs up and click the subscribe button down below like I said feel free to leave me any comments if you guys started dermaplaning yourself is it something you've been doing for a while is it something you've been thinking about and like I say, if you've got any tips and tricks or just anything that I could do to help improve my skincare and my dermaplaning routine, then please feel free to let me know. But apart from that, that is it guys, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!